Alright, so this video is going to be on infinite geometric series. In the last video, we focused on partial sums and proving that an infinite series was convergent or divergent using those partial sums. Okay, so now we're going to move on to infinite geometric series. Okay, this is a special type of series. We did a little bit of work with geometric series in high school. Okay, so just to recap what a geometric series is, okay, a geometric series is a geometric series is a series in which you multiply the previous term in the series by that common ratio that we used r okay and that gives us the next term in the series okay so for example if we had a common ratio of 2 so r equals 2 and a starting term which we denote with an a okay so a equals let's say 3 okay then our series would look like this. It would look like 3 plus our previous term times 2, which is 6, plus our previous term, 6, times our common ratio, which is 2, so that gives us 12, plus multiply this by 2, 24, 48, and so on. Okay, that is an example of a geometric series. And in high school, we found the sum of a geometric series with with finite terms okay and this sum was a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r okay and now if we have an infinite series you can see that as we take our limit okay so as we do a limit as n approaches infinity of this a times 1 minus r over r to the n over 1 minus r you can see where the series is divergent and where the series is convergent okay the series diverges okay and we don't need to go over this for too long we've done enough work with this the series is divergent if r is less than negative 1 or r is greater than 1 meaning the series is convergent if negative 1 is less than r is less than 1 so if it's if r is between negative 1 and 1 okay so now you know great we know that the series is convergent if r is between these values but we need to actually be able to find the sum right so we can actually do a bunch of little work with this with this limit here and that is going to end up giving us our sum, okay? So the limit as n approaches infinity, okay? We have our first term times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. And remember, the only terms that actually matter in this limit is going to be this r to the n, because that's the only term that has n in it, okay? So we can just take out this a, okay? It might make it a little less confusing. We have a limit as uh, n approaches infinity of now we can separate this fraction. Okay, we don't have a anymore. Okay, so so let let that go away. All right, we can do a one over one minus r minus a r to the n over one minus r. Okay, so now we can break this up into two separate limits. Okay, we can do a limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 1 minus r minus the, well, it's going to be a limit as n approaches infinity of r to the n over 1 minus r. Okay, now, first off, this doesn't have any ends in it, so we can just get rid of this limit sign here. Okay, so we know in the next line down, we're going to have an a over 1 minus r. But for, for this limit over here, we can pull out this 1 minus r because that doesn't have any ends in it. Okay, so if we pull out that 1 minus r, then all we have left is that r to the n on the inside of that limit. Okay, and we know that since this common ratio, okay, is going to be between negative 1 and 1, that if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of this r to the n right here, 
well, that's just going to become zero, okay? It's going to be a decimal that gets raised to a power on to infinity. So, of course, it's going to approach zero. So this whole piece right here goes to zero, and you're left with your actual sum, which is a over 1 minus r, okay? So actually, it turns out to be a little bit nicer than the one that you used previously with a finite geometric series, uh, which was, you know, this mess right here. So we have a quick example up on the board here. We want to find if this infinite series right here, 3 minus 1 plus 1 third minus 1 ninth plus 1 27th, is convergent or divergent, all right? And all we have to do here, just point out, okay, well, what's our common ratio here? Our common ratio is just going to be, well, how do we get from, it may be a little more obvious uh, than from this 3 to negative 1, I don't know, you know, whatever suits you best. How do we get from negative 1 to positive 1 third? We multiply by negative 1 third. So our common ratio is going to be negative 1 third. Okay? So that common ratio, okay, is between negative 1 and 1, okay? So this checks off. We know that this series is convergent, okay? So convergent. And now we just have to find the sum. I know I didn't say it in the problem, but we're going to do it. So our sum equals a over 1 minus r. Now what's a? a is the first term in the series, okay? I know that we've been doing like a sub 1 and a sub 2 as sequences, but don't get that confused. Uh, this is just going to be the first term in the, the series. You can put it as a sub 1 if you want. It uh, doesn't matter. So this is 3, right? That's our first term in the series. And we have a 1 minus our common ratio, which is negative 1 third. That is just going to give us a 3 over 4 thirds because this becomes plus plus. Okay, and when you flip this up, you're going to end up getting just a 9 over 4. All right, so, you know, pretty nice and easy example there. All you have to do is find that common ratio, see if it's convergent or divergent. In this case, it was convergent because our common ratio was, was between negative 1 and 1. So then we just, since it was convergent, we found the sum, and that happened to be 9 fourths. All right, so our next problem here, we have the, the sum as n equals 1 to infinity of 2 to the 2n times 3 to the 1 minus n. We want to see if that's convergent or divergent, okay? And this is how you'll see most series written in that summation formula, okay? You're not generally going to see them actually written out like we, did in the, like we had in the last problem. So what you need to know about geometric series is that in the summation formula, and you may have done some work with this when you did uh, finite geometric series, but um, this is the form that you need to get geometric series in, okay? A to the R, or A times R to the N minus one, okay? That's the form that we need to get this into to be able to figure out what our common ratio is. And of course, if it is going to be between negative one and one, then we need to know our uh, first term in the series. So what can we do to this? Well, we need to use our exponent properties to make this a, a times r to the n minus 1 form. Okay, the first thing, the first couple things that we can do for this 2, okay, we can say that that is the same thing as 2 squared to the n, right? I mean, you if you if you multiply this through, it's 2 to the 2n, so that's the same thing, okay? Next, we have a 3 to the 1 minus n. Now, that's basically n minus 1 backwards, so if you multiply by a negative 1, okay, then this becomes n minus 1, okay? And all you have to do for that is just put that to the denominator, and it becomes 3 times n minus 1, all right? Now... 2 squared, we know that that is 4, okay? So, at least you better know that. <laughs> Alright, we have a sum as, or the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 4 to the n over 3 to the n minus 1. And now all we have to deal with is that 4 to the n. We need to break that up into, this will end up be, being broken up into 4 
times 4 to the n minus 1 over 3 to the n minus 1. Okay, how do we break that up? Well, this is the same thing as 4 to the first power. So if we're to multiply these two together, then we need to add the exponents. And when you add the exponents, 1 plus a negative 1 is going to be 0. So you're left with 4 to the n. And that's the 4 to the n that we have over here. So we can combine this, okay, to be, first off, we have that 4 out front, and then we have a 4 thirds, and that's to the n minus 1 power, okay? So there you go. We have it in that a times r to the n minus 1 form. So now we know that our r equals 4 thirds, which is greater than 1, meaning that our series is divergent. All right, so really the hard part is just to get this into that a times r to the n minus 1 form, and then it's just recognizing your common ratio and if it is between negative 1 and 1. If not, it's divergent. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for sequences and series in the next video in the series. Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon!